Behavioral observation audiometry. This was done before universal newborn hearing screening. So it was testing a child through observation. So watching infants, zero to six months. Um, it's sort of old fashioned and it's not necessarily a valid test anymore. So the sound would be presented and then the audiologist would look for a response. And they were done in sound fields, so it was done without like any headphones on the baby. There was no ear specificity. Responses to sounds are reflexive or voluntary, and um, they would use warble tones or noise makers. But the test was totally subjective because it relied on the audiologist's perspective, and it wasn't a reliable test because, of course, the audiologist or any person, you know, you want the child to pass the test, so you would look for signs when there might not really be signs. Responses to sounds that were considered um, okay included eye blinking, eye whitening, wake from a light sleep, crying, facial twists, and movement changing and sucking patterns. Um, so yeah, behavior observation audiometry isn't a valid test anymore. That being said, if you bang a pot over an infant's head and they wake up crying, that's a good sign. Beyond behavioral observation audiometry with six months and onward was sound field audiometry, which we have one or two speakers and sounds are presented into the booth. They could be tape recording or animal sounds, babbling, narrow band sounds, and you would look for a response. So a six month old infant sitting in the booth on its uh, mother's lap, if noise, you know, like music is played and the infant looks up to see where the music is, that's a significant response. But a lack of response might not necessarily be meaningful. It just might be that the child is like engrossed in a toy or not paying attention. There's conditioned orientation reflex, which is a technique used for testing young children in sound fields. The child looks in the direction of the sound source for a flashing light. They have to have peripheral vision. They have to have, um, you know, head and neck control. It's done in sound fields, so you don't get ear specific information. The child is seated either in front or in the middle of two speakers in the audio audiometric suite. Sounds are put in and the child turns their head to look at the direction that the sound is coming in and that's called localization. So around six months when the infant has control of their neck to go and orient towards the sound. It's also called visual reinforcement audiometry, VRA. The children's response of an auditory stimuli is visually rewarded. Around 7 to 18 months, the child is conditioned to turn to a light or a toy when a sound is heard. And then, so the sound is put into the booth. The infant looks to the right or to the left of the speaker that the sound is coming out of. When the infant sees the sound, there's this little toy light box that lights up. And the infant, um, you know, is visually rewarded for recognizing that a sound was put in. And the light box, it doesn't stay on for too long, just long enough to hold the infant's attention. And then it goes away. So you could use pure tones or narrow band noise. Um, and like I said, you, you start at a level that you're sure the child can hear. You put the tone and the light in at the same time. So the child associates the tone with the light. Then after they understand what they're doing, you take the light box away, you present just the tone, and when the child looks towards the speaker where the sound came from, you reinforce the child by playing that toy or light. With visual reinforcement audiometry, you want to use warble tones, so they're like wah, 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 sounds that sound a bit more interesting to the child, between 500 and 4,000 hertz, the most important frequencies for you to test are those speech frequencies, um, 2,000, 500, 1,000, 4,000 hertz, those frequencies that are very important for speech. So you want to try to get the threshold or a response, the minimum response at those four frequencies. You can also do speech detection on children by using babbling music. So the child could be sitting quietly in the booth with their mom and the other audiologist and the audiologist doing the testing can put a CD on and slowly raise the volume of the CD, you know, with children's songs. And the level where the child looks up and tries to figure out what that noise is or where it's coming from would be their speech detection threshold or their music awareness threshold. Both mean the same thing. 